Alright, so today I'm going to be tying um, basically a pheasant tail nymph. Um, it's just a real uh, general pattern that's created imitating uh, a bunch of different nymphs, specifically uh, mayfly nymphs. Um, you can really, really vary this pattern to make it your own. Um, it's pretty much stays a pheasant tail as long as you use the pheasant tail body and uh, and uh, the tail and legs. So I'll get to tie in my own little version. So the hook I'm going to be using today is a uh, Mustad 9671 and that's in the size 14. And the bead I got on there is a Spirit River Bright Bead in the 1 8 inch um, or 3.2 millimeter. So the, hook, the thread I'll be using is the UTC 140 in the rusty brown. So let's get our thread on there. Trim away our excess. And then we'll just wrap back until when our thread hangs it's in, lar in line with the barb of the hook. Now the first thing we're going to do is tie on about four strands or four fibers of uh, pheasant tail for our tail. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift those about 90 degrees away from the stem and then rip those off. That'll line up the tips. So we'll tie those in with loose wrap right on top. And then we'll go ahead and adjust the length of our tail by just pulling it through. And for the length we want just about the length of the shank of the hook, maybe just a touch shorter looks good. Alright, so we can go ahead and trim this down the length of our body which is going to be about two-thirds of the hook shank. Now we'll tie in our ribbing which is going to be just a real fine piece of uh, copper wire. This is uh, UTC Ultra Wire um, and that's in the small size. Just tie that in the length of the body to secure that in on your way up. Just kind of cleaning everything up. All right. And wrap our thread back down. We'll stop just a little bit before we're where our tail begins. So now we're going to tie in. <clears throat> our abdomen which is going to be six strands of uh, pheasant tail and again bend those 90 degrees out from the stem and then rip those off that'll line up the tips actually I'm going to wind this back towards the bead because I'm going to tie my legs in um, pointing forward and it's just easier if I tie them in up here. So I'm going to go ahead tie them in on top of the hook shank again with a loose wrap and just just a little behind the bead, just a wrap or two behind the bead. And then loose wrap, go ahead and pull those fibers through. And what you're looking for is a little bit shorter than the hook shank for your for your leg length. So just pull those through. That looks good. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have three on either side uh, once we complete that. That's why I ripped off um, six strands. So we're just going to tie these in, keeping them on top as we work our way back because this is actually what we're going to use to form our body. It's the same six fibers of pheasant tail and I'll, I want to build up just a little bit of a taper so <clears throat> kind of make that carrot shape with your thread I might go down once more and basically each time stop your thread wraps just a little bit shorter from the back and then start working back up and you'll see that kind of creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a shape there the tapered look that you're going for Alright, 
Now we're going to counter wrap our pheasant tail fibers. Work those forward. You always want to do that with your weakest fiber. Basically counter wrapping, that just means I'm winding it opposite the direction that I'm winding my thread. And now, by tying these pheasant tail fibers in by the tip, it, they're naturally going to taper. Um, they're going to get larger as you wrap forward, which is just going to help help with that shape. So the thread kind of got us started and now the natural fiber will take us the rest of the way in creating that nice carrot shape. So I'll just take one wrap in front, hold that down, or one wrap over the top of the fibers, one wrap in front, and we'll do that a couple more times. And that should lock it in. So now we can just trim nice and close. And now we'll bring our rib up through. So now you bring this around the normal way you tie your thread or bring your thread around. So I usually do one wrap right on the shank of the hook and then I start working my way forward. And you're looking for about three to four wraps of your wire coming up through. So bring that up through a 90 degree bend in your wire. And secure that down with a few thread wraps. And then hold your thread tight, and you should be able to wiggle that wire, and it should break for you. And that'll make a nice clean break, kind of prevents a big lump from forming. All right. Now we got to tie in our wing case material, which for this I'm going to use a brown piece of Swiss straw. This is a light brown color. Basically, it comes almost like on on a board like uh, uh, Antron wood um, or chenille. It's just kind of a plastic material that's been folded multiple times. Um, kind of just creates a neat look for wing cases. I, I use it quite a bit. <clears throat> Alright, so once you have that Swiss straw tied in, you're ready to <clears throat> dub your thorax. So what I have here is... Um, hairline dubbin, they're a hairy ice dub in a rust color. And it's a good mix of uh, natural fibers and uh, and some of the more iridescent fibers in there. Um, it's got a lot of nice card hairs in there for kind of a leggy appearance. So just want to get that on there nice and thin. <clears throat> Don't need too much of it. And just kind of build up a little bit of a thorax. And when you have just a little bit of the dubbing left, just kind of check your shape there real quick. What you want to do is split those pheasant tail fibers that you tied in earlier. So you have three pointing off one side and three pointing off another and just kind of fold those backwards. There we go. And then hold those out of the way and do one wrap of dubbing right in front or a couple right in front of those fibers. I'll kind of hold those backwards and then just go ahead keeping those split on either side bring your wing case material over top and tie that off with one wrap see how it's setting And cinch that down. A couple wraps, bring it backwards, take a couple wraps right in front of it and right behind the bead. And then you're ready to trim off. So 
trim nice and close. A nice sharp pair of scissors will help you with that. And then we can go ahead and whip finish. We're not quite done with the fly yet though. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of super glue. Put a little bit on the first about centimeter of thread that you have there. Then you can go ahead and take one or two wraps right on the thread and then go ahead straight into the whip finish. And three turns should do it. Pull that tight. Trim your excess. And there's almost our completed fly. Kind of mess up your pheasant tail legs there a little bit so that they don't marry, so that they're kind of split apart a little bit. That's kind of what it'll look like. So, what I'm going to do is take a brown permanent marker and just kind of model, dab it on the back there, right on the Swiss straw. Just kind of model that up, give it a little bit of color. You can bring that right onto the thread. <clears throat> you should get something like that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I think it just adds a little bit to the fly. And then what we're going to do is to kind of protect that Swiss straw and the permanent marker, I'm going to go ahead and put a little dab of Bug Bond, which is a UV cured resin, <clears throat> right on there. And also kind of make it shiny, um, just gives a really neat effect. So go ahead and spread that around with our needle. Being careful to keep it off of the off of the legs the best you can. Just work it all the way around until you're happy. And then take your UV light and set it. And you want to hold that on there for about 10 seconds. Um, this stuff will always always seems to dry a little tacky or cure a little tacky. Um, it's like it has a little film coating on it. Um, so what I will always do is uh, is I'll coat that with um, with a clear nail polish just to make sure it's it's good and hard. Um, and if you don't do that, it has a tendency to kind of cloud up. Um, the bug bond does so keeps it nice and nice and clear, nice and hard. Um, should last yeah. So I'll go ahead and do that. And this is just Sally Hansen's um, Insta Dry clear nail polish that you can find pretty much anywhere. I think I got this one at Walmart. Just give a good coating. And there's your fly. Once that dries, which it doesn't take long, just, just a couple minutes, um, you know, it, it, it's finished. So, um, again, pheasant tail, uh, nymphs, every fly tire should have a few of these patterns. Um, you know, you can vary the colors uh, of the wire, of the bead, uh, the wing casing. Um, typically the dubbing uh, is actually not dubbing, it's typically peacock curl. Um, they make peacock curl colored dubbings that you can play around with too. Um, just a lot, of, a lot of variability that you can throw into this fly, kind of make it your own pattern. So um, go ahead, tie a couple of these up and I hope they catch a fish.